to say you're beautiful would be a lie, or close to say nothing. You was born as a little sunshine and grew up in one of the most beautiful women ever wandered the Tamriel, an angel, a divine in a seductive flesh. But this also brought a dark page to your life story. Many people were trying to use your beauty and to use you, but it seems even the divines themselves patronized you. And whatever bad happened in your life, you always had the people who protected you, and nothing changed with years. But after facing this, you swore you will never make harm to anyone, never wield a sword or burn someone's skin with destructive magic. You sworn to use your beauty only for good and to make people's life brighter. And one day you found a way to do this, becoming a bard. You have traveled all the Tamriel, and all around it your voice was like a siren song, charming everyone around you, from peasants to jarls and kings. Your songs became a divine voice in flesh, making even ghosts sometimes to follow you as a silent guardians. Once you arrived to cold and proud land, which beauty could be the same as yours if this land was a human, you arrived to Skyrim. But this land was having a harsh times, and even against your will, you was involved into this. You understood that you can never bring peace to Skyrim alone, and so you found a brave companions whose strength and braveness was the same great as your own beauty. It is time for you to give them wins for great deeds, but you are not just using them, you love them the same as they love you. You are thankful to them for giving you strengths to make this world better, and that's why they love you even more. They will follow you everywhere, from your own home to the most remote places of Tamriel. Whatever evil will stand in your way, together you will overcome it. And whatever will happen to this world, they always will be by your side. Hey guys, Simtar here, and welcome to the best Skyrim build series. Today I will show you the very unique build and the playstyle. The Siren, a bard character. She is a pacifist, not using weapons, armor or combat magic at all, completely relying on her bard skills, inspiring her followers and giving them an incredible combat spirit, rallying them to the victory. Without her weapons and a single battle spell, this build, besides being very chill and great for roleplay, can easily deal with literally any challenge that even the heaviest modded game can give you. Sounds interesting? Then let's take a look. Race Imperial Female Imperials is the best race for Siren build, as Imperials have passive bonus of 150 armor and 15% of attack damage to allied units. The Siren will have various other talents to empower allies, and this passive will stack greatly with them. Imperial Virtues is just a good utility passive that will increase one of your attributes regeneration in combat. Human Spirit is a great display of curiosity of human race. Human's life is usually shorter compared to mares, and so they must learn faster. This ability allows you to change one of your attributes, two skills and one resistance. Changing process in numbers is minus some value of the one chosen attribute, but plus twice this value to other attribute. This also can be same attribute as well. Long story short, you can decrease not needed attributes and twice increase needed, or simply get a bonus to chosen one. For Siren, I advise to raise your magicka and restoration skills for sure, the rest is up to your taste. Oh, and why exactly female? You'll see a bit later. Before we continue, just a few words for those who will stuck on playing this build, let's say roleplay-wise, at the beginning. It can look impossible to play without armor, weapon and combat magic at all, but here is your plan. Start in rifting using alternate start mod, or if you don't have it, just take a carriage to rifting after you escaped Helgen. Talk with our old friend Brynjolf and join the Seals Guild. First couple of quests can be done without any combat at all, and that will give you some starting money. Then steal some stuff here and there and save it to Seals fans. Well, you know how to do that, right? Go to Rift in Jail and release Inigo. 
Inigo is a must-have follower mod for this build, and it is also available on Xbox One as well. Inigo is literally the best follower mod ever made. After you play just a couple of hours with him, you'll understand why. And now just listen to my advice and take him in your party. Then take carriage to Winterhold and enter the college. There is only one step left to do. Now you should talk with spell tom traders and buy only two must-have spells at least. Courage and Healing Hands. You'll have enough money for that after rifting for sure. Bang! You're ready to play. Courage is a good beginner's follower buff, and with Healing Hands you can heal your follower and don't let enemies switch on you. Attributes Distribution After several tests, I came that the most balanced option for Siren is about 40% to hit points and 60% to Magicka. Don't spend points into stamina at all. Standing Stone Early to mid game, Lower. Lower is a must have choice for early game because of two reasons. First of all, Lower's passive feature is great for boss roleplay as Siren build and your gameplay needs as well. Secret Admirer periodically sends you enchanted items, which will be very useful for equipping your followers and yourself, helping to survive early game and level up enchanting skill fast. Second passive ability, called Undying Love, automatically resurrects you on death once per 15 minutes. That's a great saving ability, as Bard is once again pretty fragile class in early game. Standing Stone, mid to late game, Atonak. After you will master core part of the build and max enchanting skill, Lover Stone is not so yet needed and Atonak is a superior stone for making Siren build maximum effective. First of all, Atonak stops your magicka regeneration, but instead restores magicka for each killed enemy by 20 levels of enemy killed. This means, for example, when your followers beat uh, level 25 bandit, Atronach will restore you 500 magicka. You will not be using spells very often, as you will be switching between spells and the bard powers. That's why recharging mana from kills only will be more than enough. On the other hand, Atronach makes all your spells twice cheaper in mana cost and 25% more powerful, until you will have at least one magicka point. In other words, for Siren build, that's always. <laughs> this will give a great boost to your party buffs and heals, greatly increasing party tenacity. Now it's perks time. The Siren has three main skills – Speech, Illusion and Restoration. Let's start from Speech. The core branch is the middle left one, performer branch. You need to learn it completely. Main perk in it, performer, allows you to play a song once per day to entertain up to 5 people around you, collecting a donations from them after that. Next perk allows you to have better donations from opposite genders, and that's why, by the way, we picked up a female character to have much more income from our civil bard ability. Next one allows you to use this power several times per day. And by the way, this is how performer ability looks in game. All the next perks after that is where the magic happens. With all perks learned here, you will be able to use the same performer power but in combat and instead with two different effects per your choice. First effect makes up to 5 enemies unstoppably dance listening to your song. That's actually a hardcore control aura that makes enemies helpless while your followers will slice them down. With the upgrade, this power can also affect undead, animals and Daedra. Second option, Earthquake Drum, is such a powerful beat that it literally spreads shockwaves, causing a repetitive area of effect damage to all enemies in a wide radius, and moreover, it decreases their magic resistance, heal your allies and give your allies bonus attack damage per each drum beat. This is how perform ability and drum beats looks like in combat. The bar speech skills are incredibly powerful and useful, but they also require you to position your character wisely. But don't be afraid, this will come after just a few battles experienced. And don't forget to learn the left branch of speech skill for both roleplay aspect and maximum profit from trading with merchants. But only learn this branch when you will have the free perk points besides the core branches.
The second core skill is Illusion. Besides the basic perk, we need only one perk in a middle branch. Take it to have better courage and rally spells effects on your followers. Most interesting branch here is a Commanding Precinct one. Even Commanding Precinct itself is already amazing passive. It is an aura of nobility that gives allies 20% attack damage and critical strike chance. With the upgrades, it will give allies about 160 armor and 40% magic resistances if you are above 75% of health. And now, do you remember Imperial's racial passive, huh? In total, Racial Passive and Commanding Precinct Synergy will buff your allies for 310 armor, 40% magic resistance and 35% damage bonus passively for free. With this, you can reach armor and magic race caps for followers with minimum efforts, leaving a free enchanting slots for another empowerment. The last perk in this branch is a protection perk. When enemies hit you, there is a small chance your follower will instantly charge to this enemy and gain almost quadruple damage for the next 5 seconds. In other words, when someone of enemies hit you and trigger this perk, it is a one shot for him. Third main skill is restoration. Here we need really a lot. Take the main perk for restoration scaling, obviously, Edge Walker and Respite for bonus healing at low health, and stamina restoration equal to health restored, that will be a great bonus for combat followers, and of course, take restoration dual casting. In the right branch, take only Spirit Tutors and the Sacred Guardian. Spirit Tutors will give you huge restoration boost to restoration spells. It adds two Spirit Tutors, Wandering Skyrim, and when you find them, you receive Blessing from each, rising your Restoration spell power for 1% per 20 points of Magicka. That means, for example, at 500 Magicka, only this perk will give you an additional 50% bonus. Now you can look how strong is fast healing, for example. 165 points against base 50 points of that spell more than 3 times stronger in total, or look at 3 rings HP buff spell, which will give you in total an insane slowly fading bonus of 490 health, that's just ridiculous. Sacred Guardian is a protective aura that automatically heals heavily wounded ally for 150 points with a 30 seconds cooldown per target. In middle right branch, take Overflowing Cup and Under My Winds. Overflowing Cup is converting overheal to temporary bonus health and Under My Winds is one of the key perks which transfers dual casted self healing spells to all of your allies. Yes, that means instant fast healing to everyone in party when you just fast healing yourself, also making healing process much more convenient. The last branch is a Warrior's Flame branch, loam it completely besides Ashes to Ashes perk, while uh, it is optional actually, you can learn it or cannot learn it, just one per point. Warrior's Flame is a passive effect that randomly jumps to you or your enemies with all upgrades. If active on your allies, it restores all three attributes – health, magicka and stamina. If on enemy, drains magicka and stamina, reduces armor and magic resistance, making a great synergy with Earthquake Drum Power. The ultimate perk also allows you to once per day cast Warrior's Flame on everyone around you, that is very useful in massive combat. Secondary skills, alteration. We need only the very right branch here. After basic perk, take mage armor perk for obvious reasons. And don't forget distorted shape, which make you invincible for 10 seconds after combat starts until you make any actions besides moving. That's a great ability to let you position yourself comfortably, which is very important for bard class. And take energy shield perk for maximum defense, which gives you an additional 35 damage reduction by the cost of your magicka. Enchanting. While it is a secondary skill, but you should master it as sap as well, to learn the main branch that is all about enchantments themselves. Enchanting is very important still, as with max skill you can empower not only yourself greatly, but all of your followers as well. Enchantments and spells. As usual, this part is just my personal recommendations, but it should be a good template for you. So I enchanted my items in the next way. Circlet or helmet slot. Restoration and enchantment mana cost decrease. Boots. Movement speed and a chance per second to restore all three attributes. Closing. That's on what I used enchantment master perk for triple enchantment. 
damage protection at low health, great damage protection when casting, and stagger immunity when casting a ritual spell. Glows, magicka bonus and passive summoning are not very strong but immortal ghost to automatically fights for you, mostly a roleplay aspect. Ring, magic resistance and HP bonus, amulet same as ring. Spells, a cut to recital structure. For a cutter recital, remember obviously a flash spell for armor, healing blossom for powerful delayed healing in combat, and the three rings for HP bonus in combat. Core spells, rally, area of effect spell, better version of uh, courage, giving HP bonus and protect followers from fleeing in combat. Spectral Warband, master tier illusion spell, that is summoning clones of your allies in combat, a great assistance in a hard battles and a great damage booster. Fast healing. Actually, the only healing spell you will need to keep your party on strong feats, as you have on my wings perk. Mass Paralysis Alteration Master Tier Spell Use it in critical situations to paralyze your enemies and escape or regroup. Well, that soul is very good, but how about some proof, Sinitar? Piece of cake. One follower versus five bandits and irresistible dance in action. Now, 3 followers versus close to 30 bandits level scale by the way, Rally, Spectral Warband and the Earthquake Drum in action. Looks insane, huh? Your character is literally doing zero damage, but under your protection and buffs, each of your followers were able to beat about 10 bandits of the same level, fighting them simultaneously. Well, well, but what about the bosses? Ahem, um, <coughs> well, let's take a look. Red Eagle, level 100, 5000 HP, multiple summons and other stuff. Well, maybe you are just lucky. Are you afraid to try him and all his summons with only one follower, not the three followers? Well, if you say so. I think that's enough for Red Eagle to be humiliated today, folks. What do we have as a result? We have a really original playstyle, comfortable for roleplay, a pacifist who does not wear or use armor, weapons or combat spells, but supporting her followers with such tremendous power and ability synergy that they simply turn into unstoppable war machines, being able to protect you from everything possible. I hope you guys enjoyed this build and thank you for watching. Share your opinions and build ideas, don't forget to enable channel notifications and be sure to join our Discord to always stay in touch. Simitar Gaming here, signing out.